Hello, I'm Crispin and welcome to Poker Room Review, your guide for live poker rooms all across the world. In each episode, we review a live poker venue, discussing the important things you need to know when planning your next poker destination. For each venue, we review a range of characteristics, including location and access, game options, service and experience, and rake and rewards. We also discuss the rules, quirks, and issues relating to each location. Today, we are at Casino Canberra in Australia's national capital city. Despite being the capital, Canberra is a rather small city with only around 400,000 people. The largest employer is the Australian government, with many working in and around the public service. The city boasts a small casino though, with poker on offer. We wanted to check it out, so is it worth paying a visit? Category one, location and access. Canberra does have an international airport, which prior to the pandemic was running regular flights out of Asia. Now the routes run only through Fiji. Uh, domestic routes run throughout the day. Therefore, if you're traveling from abroad, chances are you'll need to get to one major hub before reaching Canberra. Canberra is a little over three hours drive from Sydney and the Murray's bus service will pick you up either from the inner city area or the airport and it's around 50 Australian dollars each way. Once in Canberra, however, the casino is centrally located in the civic area and easily walkable from where the Sydney bus drops you off. From the airport is about 15 minutes on the bus, but beware of the local taxi service because Canberra taxis are a ripoff. Canberra is a really beautiful location, superbly designed with well-maintained facilities, clean air, and embedded in a natural Australian landscape. It has some of the great family attractions, including the parliament, museums, and galleries, most of which are free, plus there are many adventure activities and festivals. Still, flights to Canberra are kind of expensive and direct options are limited. Once you have made it to Canberra though, things get simpler and the poker tables are right there in the middle of the gaming floor. Accommodation is plentiful, but can be on the pricier side, though you can afford to shop around since the casino is located next to multiple public transport hubs. For location and access, three stars. Category two, game options. Limited, very limited. Poker at Casino Canberra only runs two nights a week, Friday and Saturday from 7 p.m. until around 3.30 a.m. What's more, there are only two tables running which fill up really early. You can put your name down to register from 12 p.m. onwards that day, and then you have to return when the game starts at seven. The lists are incredibly long, so if you just showed up at 7 p.m., you probably won't get to play at all. Both tables are $2, $3, no limit Texas Hold'em with a $100 to $500 buy-in. No Omaha, no tournaments, no high stake levels, really nothing at all except those two tables running for around 17 hours per week. Anything lower than that and you'd have to say poker wasn't an offering at all. For game options, one star. Three, service and experience. Here things leap up somewhat. Of all the casinos in the world, Casino Canberra has among the best aesthetic, with absolutely superb upholstery, felt, chairs, carpet, and lighting. Playing there really does feel like you're in someone's wealthy mansion or in Casino Royale, with spacious layout and gorgeous design. Staff are also genuinely friendly. Despite being superbly well-dressed, they maintain a sense of country feel. Food is affordable and you can eat at the table, though I'd recommend sharing with the person next to you because the serving sizes are enormous. Coffee isn't free, but at least it is excellent. That said, there are some notable problems. Players can't wear headphones and must sit back from the table whenever using their phone. The tables are situated close to the fun wheel, which can get a bit distracting, as are the announcements over the PA system for whenever a new person has been called to the table. The biggest problem, however, are the hands played per hour. You'd expect there'd be a greater sense of urgency given how limited the time is at the felt. However, every process step seems aimed at slowing down the action. First, both tables have a shuffling machine Yet when we were there, neither were in use during our visit. 
Dealers deal out of a shoe and the cards are counted out and washed every dealer change. Games play 10 handed, which slows the game down even more and dealers have to stretch across large tables to collect cards and chips. Chips are also changed at the table. It seems that literally everything that happens is designed to slow down the action and hands played per hour is around 20% lower than the global average. There are a few other nitpicks too. For instance, the tables don't even have all in buttons, so it's not always clear when someone has pushed all their chips in or they still have some behind. It seems that with just a little bit of logistical thought and at least one more table, many of these issues would be resolved and the game would play faster and the experience would be much improved. It's clear that the casino management doesn't really know how to run a poker game, but the casino itself is truly gorgeous and a really nice place just to be. There's large screens showing live sporting events and staff have a genuine down-to-earth personality. For service and experience, three stars. Category four, rake and rewards. Most of you will know by now that Rake in Australia is pretty taxing. 10% for pretty much all games nationwide with a cap of $15, no different here at Casino Canberra. And surprisingly, there are no jackpots or high hand bonuses of any kind. Moreover, the Casino Canberra rewards program doesn't apply to the poker table, so locals don't even accrue points. None of this is surprising for a venue that runs poker over two tables two nights a week. At the casino, it's more of a novelty than a feature. For rake and rewards, one and a half stars. Rules and quirks. The real quirk of Casino Canberra is the absence of special rules. Not even straddles are allowed. Any bet placed after the big blind is considered a blind raise with no option available. There is one strange rule though, which on reflection, I kind of like. But first, I've published a new book on Kindle called Poker Stoic. How to control tilt and make good decisions. I share 200 stoic poker maxims from my private notepad, applying stoic philosophy directly to poker. Obviously I'm biased, but this has honestly saved me more big blinds than any other product. If you'd like to improve your mental game and support this channel, see the link below. It's only 10 US dollars. You can download it straight away. I'd really appreciate it if you left a review. But back to Casino Canberra. At most casinos, if you put out more chips than required for a call, but less than the amount for a raise, the dealer will determine whether the player has exceeded 50% of the extra bet necessary to be a raise. And if so, the player will be asked to put out the extra chips for a min raise. If not, the bet is considered just a call. Not so at Casino Canberra. If a player fails to announce a raise, then any amount short of a actual raise is considered a call no matter what. On reflection, I kind of like this rule since most of the time when this happens, players are only intending to call anyway, and it reduces time wasting trying to work out the amount of a valid raise. The other rule I like is that Casino Canberra punishes betting out of turn. If a player bets out of turn, then the player whose turn it was to act if they check, then the player who bet out of turn is obliged to check as well. If the player whose turn it was to act bets a small amount, then the best the uh, person who played out of turn can do is call. I think this is good for the game and reduces angle shooting. Overall, poker at Casino Canberra is not a major offering and is something hosted casually as a courtesy. It's difficult to get a seat, and really something that can only be guaranteed by showing up at midday to put your name down. The game runs slow and with many processes holding things up. That said, the staff are friendly, the furniture comfortable and the setting and decor absolutely gorgeous. You absolutely would not come to Canberra for the poker offerings, but if you're here already in town and know you have a Friday or Saturday free, then now you know that there is poker available and how to access it one and a half stars. We review new poker rooms regularly, so if you found value in this content, please hit the like and subscribe buttons because it's the only way YouTube will know that this is the case. Also, please, if you've accessed any Facebook groups or poker forums, please consider sharing this video because getting more views is the only way we can create more content. In the meantime, have you been to Casino Canberra? If so, what did you think? Is there anything I've missed or recommendations you'd like to include? I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. If you wanna check out more reviews, you can do so right now. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.